Hey guys, so today I'll be talking to you guys about um, volume profile visible range, aggregate volume. These are free indicators, you can claim them again. So I'm going to quickly cover how you can claim them, I'm going to then explain what they are and then how to use them. Um, so to claim them, just go to either Spaceman BTC or Cuban's Edge on Twitter and click this link. This link will bring you to the Discord and there will be a form called Sign Up Form. This will be unlocked and public so you can click the form and just type in your trading view username. I'm not asking for anything else, just type in your trading view username and you'll be able to claim a free, two free indicators at once. Um, so this indicator video is covering uh, aggregate VPVR and aggregate volume. So what's aggregate volume? Aggregate volume is volume uh, divided by exchanges and you can color code them how you wish and it divides this view. So what you can do is then aggregate RVOL, which is uh, it will highlight areas of volume which is significant importance. Um, you could do candle coloring, which is on right now. So you see these yellow bars and these red bars are more the coloring of white. I've got that on just so uh, I can highlight spikes in volume. And then you've got um, the ability to show the text if you wish. If you zoom in, it will be clearer, but it shows up really well um, in a vertical view, which is pretty nice in my opinion. Um, so let yeah, let's let's get right into it. Let's get into why these indicators are really good and how to use them. Uh, a lot of these indicators these indicators were claimed by a lot of people because obviously they're free they're very professional tools um and they're free and so when we were when i released them i expected uh, people to be excited to use them and they were but some people weren't sure how to use them so i thought you know if we're going to give these indicators away we have to cover them away um and give them some tutorials so i'm starting with these tutorials just because uh, a lot of people have this one and i feel like uh, volume is quite a a an important tool to learn how to utilize properly especially aggregate bpvr now, aggregate VPVR is the same as volume, aggregate volume, in the sense that it's aggregating data from multiple exchanges, but only free, Binance, Bybit, and OKX to save on drawing data. After aggregating all this, is then only highlighting the value area in the colors of the exchanges, but this is also aggregate volume, it's just not being highlighted. Um, so now that that's been explained, so you can see Binance, Bybit, OKX, and you can make this all the same color if you wish, but I like it because it gives that the, the range of separation for the exchanges and how they're reporting the data. So that's the indicators. That's how you claim them. Once again, go to Twitter, find our links for Discord, click the Discord link, and fill out this sign up form. It is free. You can get it for free. And we have a premium version of this, which I will explain at the end of the video if people are interested. But this version is free, so please join the Discord and claim it. That's all you have to do is type your trading views and name into that form and su submit it. That's it. So let's get into aggregate VPVR or VPVR in general and how to use it. It's a very interesting tool. Um, I think it's fascinating uh, and I think a lot of people should use it. So keep it simple. We're going to go over high volume nodes first as I think they're the easiest concept to grasp and the most usable concept for most people. Um, high volume nodes are very applicable to use in ranges. And so if you've been paying attention to the recent price action, as I'm sure a lot of you are, um, Binance has been, not Binance, Bitcoin has been in a range for a while and this range has just seemed to have broken and we'll explain that too. So how can we use high volume nodes and ranges? Well, I've highlighted this high volume node with this green box and I've included a dash line in the middle. To start with, we're going to go over the whole green box and then I'm going to explain the dash line in the middle. So the, the whole green box is this whole high volume node. Now, typically when we're in high volume nodes, what happens is we bounce with price and that's where price is determined to be currently fair value. And at the time of this, as we're bouncing between these edges of the nodes, we can use them as support and resistance for our range. And this is great because I like it as you no longer rely on subjectivity of, oh, price roughly aligns here. You can instead see an objective place at which value is being shown with volume. So volume is doing it all. It's taking in all the volume, mapping it with price, and then giving you these areas of volume, uh, high volume nodes. And so you can use these to trade your ranges. So you can long the bottom of the high volume node and typically do pretty good at getting along because it's in a range and it's short the top of the range, you know, typical range trading. But because it's mapped out with volume and the indicator is doing it for you, the high volume node gives you the edges of your range. Now, the reason that I've mapped out the middle of this high volume node is because I think this high volume node is interesting compared to most. Uh, the reason for that is if you look at this high volume node where there's a spike in volume, it's quite simple that this high volume node is the volume node, right? And you can see how price bounced within this range, this one. 
But in this one, you can see there's two spikes actually, one big spike there, and then another one there. And so if you highlight the edge of this zone, because in the high volume nodes, we typically bound at the edge of the nodes, the edge of this bottom half of this high volume node, where the volume point of control is, so the most important part of this visible profile visible range, volume profile visible range, we typically see that at the edge of this node, we are actually using it as resistance as well, because it's technically a node of its own. Now this whole node is going to be used to take in consideration for the range. But the reason this bit's interesting is if you highlight this, you can use it as a take profit zone, for example. So if I long the bottom of this range, you know, now that we've dipped, we've gone back up and I'm like, okay, cool, I'm going to use this, this main node, this whole node as the range, I would like to take into account where I might reject. So I'll take some profits. And this is the edge of this main node. So I'm longing here, for example, uh, let me get the drawing tool up. I'm longing here. I will take profit at the middle point. In this case, the middle point. It's not necessarily always going to be the middle point. Um, where the other edge of this node is. Because as you can see, this edge of this node is also acting as resistance. And we came back down. So if we keep that in mind, as we go along in the future of the history, we can see we've made that support. We flipped it back and we went back to the top of the node. It being a node and it being a range, we could short that or just full TPR long and expect a rejection, which we did. Once that happened, we flipped it back into resistance and went back to the bottom. We long it again, or just as an example, let's say we're not even long it. Let's just say you're an observer. You can see that we come up here and it's acting as slight resistance, these little consolidations. I'm zoomed out quite a bit, but that's so we can get the uh, visible profile, visible range from the uh, all time high. Um, and the reason for that is just because all time high created a long term down trend. I think it's important to show all that. Uh, but yeah, you can see how once we came back up, it acted as resistance. We deviated above and we shot back below and we tapped the bottom again. And then once we went back up again, once again rejected and we went down below it. And we even escaped the node for a bit. And then once again, we came back, it acted as resistance. We did manage to eventually claim it and it acted as support. So that's why I think it's very important to draw the nodes well. Keep in mind the main node. If there's a small, like, you can see this little difference where there's a potential for another node, keep that in mind and draw that as a middle point or like a place to take profit. It doesn't necessarily have to be the exact middle. And then this bit here, this orange line is the volume profile point of control. And that is just where all the absolute most volume was traded. And typically we would expect price to revisit that if it's naked or in the sense of a volume profile visible range, it would just act as uh, area for support and resistance, for example. And you can see how like, we kind of like bounce there, right? Uh, after revisiting, that's where we bounce. So every single part of this volume node was important. We've got the main volume node, which is acting as our main range, the entire range. We've got the middle point, which isn't necessarily always the middle, but in this case, the edge of the main node inside the whole node. And then we've got the volume profile point of control, which also acted as support. So I hope that explained um, high volume nodes. I know there's a lot to go over, but once again, the whole node is your range. This middle line is just because there's a difference in the node and there's like a potential for another node, which you can see here, where there's another spike in volume. And we use these as support and resistance zones. And then the volume point of control, which also is a support and resistance zone, which is fascinating, right? Like we've got all this information going on and it's objectively mapped out for you with volume. So what's the other part of a volume profile visible range? You thought you were done. No, there's one main part that needs to be discussed. And this is the part that's applicable to the crypto markets right now. Um, let's delete this box. Oh, you know what? Let's just make it less transparent because it's still important, right? Like we might re-enter there, for example. Um, so, or we might even come back down and use it as support. So uh, let's just do it a little bit transparent, but not fully so you can still see it. Let's talk about this inefficient zone here. This zone of inefficiency. So all of these, we just talked about high volume nodes. What are these low volume nodes? Well, these low volume nodes are inefficiencies. I'm going to paint this a different color, don't worry. We'll make it, we'll just make it white. And we'll make that the most visible part right now. So this inefficient zone. So what, what do these inefficiencies lead to? So if a high volume node leads to a slowing down in price action, and in the sense that we're not like rapidly moving from anything, we're just staying within and we're bouncing a lot. Well, low volume nodes is the opposite. High volume, opposite is low. A lot of time spent within this, opposite is a short amount of time. And this means we typically run through them. Um, and a good example is right now, exactly. 
here you can see this is a low volume node and we ran obviously down through this moment and this is what created the low volume node because there wasn't much price action there there wasn't much volume at all and when we came back to it once we finally really re-entered it we just shot right through it we didn't spend time consolidating in this zone we literally ripped right through it and this is a great example of inefficiency because as the market runs through it there's no like acceptance of value in this area it's just market shifting right Vol value expansion you can see it as um so you can you can see how we're shifting to what could potentially be a new value of fair value which would, which would be this high volume now. and what's interesting is as we run through this inefficiency we lead to another high volume node again so let's copy this green it's not the focus so we keep it lowly transparent to make it smaller because this one's smaller you can see how like it's just roughly for example you can see how it's contained price here and this is a high volume node exactly what we taught you before you could use it to trade the range and once we've come back to it we're starting to reject so what what would what would you typically expect well what could be good two things is we either accept into this volume node and we consolidate there and that gives us a chance to build a base before we potentially send back up or what could be good is maybe if we reject it here back to the high volume node but we stay above this original green one so we stay above um so make that a bit thicker so if price was to do a rejection what you'd like to see is us build like a base here before potentially sending up and that's that's literally the basics of volume profile visible range trading high volume nodes low volume nodes high volume nodes great for range trading and low volume nodes will typically rip through so if you're positioned well you're going to capitalize on that rip through right um i'm sure many of you guys did on this way down and now you know why like if you see again this area where there wasn't price really trading we shot right through it and in this big range here another high volume node so i wouldn't say it's the perfect range one's a little bit nasty to look at why is it not copying oh it's copying the, the drawings okay wrong thing let's copy this copy that we map it here so you can see it's not as clean it's not like this whole bits of range but this area here you can see how price kind of like ricocheted in between i'm sure in these moments a lot of you prepared for shorts you know you saw the economy going to shit and so on and so forth and then we ran right through them inefficient zones you positioned well you made a lot of money on the downside and if you positioned well depending how you trade of course not everyone trades everything you don't have to change range and trends you could just trade trends or you could just trade ranges if that's what you prefer and then when we came to another high volume node we built this range yeah you could trade the ranges again um so i think they're fascinating i think they're fun to use uh, they're objective measures of price like you and volume so you can keep an accurate area of where we can expect rejections and so on so i mean you saw in this main one here if we go back to it and delete all these just going back to the simple the most recent one the most one that everyone experienced and a lot of people suffered with because not everyone can trade ranges and that's okay um, and if you can't stay away from it um but if you can or if you wanted to just get a little bit better you use these high volume nodes as your extremities of the range you will typically make profit because you're not looking for valhalla when you long it or short it you're looking for areas of rejection that make logical sense um one being this middle point between these two nodes or if you just traded the whole range you'd probably do all right anyway um as long as you were just reasonable with how you set your stop losses and so on and so forth and then we re-entered this range and you can see how once again we spent some time before we shot out because high volume nodes expected to spend some time anyway i hope you guys enjoyed quite a simple video I think it was very informative. I hope you guys found it useful. It's been a while since I've done a tutorial, so forgive me for any stupidity that may have occurred. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Uh, we're going to cover the other free indicator, and we're going to cover some of our premium indicators too, and how to actually use them, and give you guys some actual, like, full-on examples of us using them. Um, so, yeah, until next time, once again, remember to claim it on Cuban's Edge Discord. Oh, and if you're interested in the premium one, let's go and load this up interested in the premium one so the premium one what's the difference spaceman uh well <laughs> if it loads actually it's because i need to set the tick size to be higher let's do 250 i believe this one's 250 as well it is um and we'll make this one 15 so it's consistent so you got the visible profiles visible range and what's fascinating about this one is not only can you draw 
the let's give you all drawings um the value area like you can in the other one so if you remember there was lines so let's enable this they, they look identical right nothing's changed but if you turn this one on you can disable this and enable the developing value area so you can see price reacting to value as it's developing and you can see price reacting to PSCS. Maybe I'll cover a video on this. Let me know if you guys are interested in seeing a video on the premium one and how you can use developing value and so on. I mean, you can see how POC is changing and that's acting as uh, real-time dynamic support and resistance, which is fascinating. Um, and and how, how we could use these features to give us an edge. And then as well as that, you also get the ability to have volume proper rolling. So what volume proper rolling is, you can set a custom time period with the number of bars. So let's say 500 bars set VP rolling and it will draw you a volume profile for exactly the 500 bars and it won't change based off of how you zoom in and out. Visible profile, visible range, volume profile, visible range obviously uses the range visible to draw your profile, but this keeps it consistent. So if you're someone who prefers, oh, I want to use 500 bars, it's consistent. So the next bar, this will shift one bar forward. Next bar, shift one bar forward. Then you can change it as well. Like you can do as much as you want. Right, let's do 1000, for example. And then bam, it's doubled the distance. How incredible is that? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you found that useful, um, I'm more than happy to make a video on the pro version. And you can find that at cubansedge.com. Um, uh, yeah, see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Ciao.